English man and an Igbo man walk into a pub. <laughs> um, sounds like the start of a joke. But actually, what the English man tells, the English man is a guy called James Whiten, who runs uh, the malaria charity, Malaria No More. And what he tells this Igbo man is, is not a joke. He tells me about malaria, because that's what he knows about. Um, and here is the story in, in a minute. This year, 627,000 people will die from malaria. That's more than the population of every British city, apart from London, Birmingham, and Leeds. And if that's not tragic enough, 86% of them will be children under the age of five. But the story gets more interesting. What I've just said is a success story. Over the last 10 years, deaths by malaria have been reduced by 42%. And actually, in our lifetime, in our lifetime, we could eliminate deaths by this disease completely. We are at the stage in the disease that the experts will call the last mile. It's a very interesting stage. If you don't eliminate the disease completely, the parasites can reform and rethink and return with a vengeance. It happened with malaria in the 60s, actually. So we're at that point. But the other thing that characterizes this stage, which is important for us to bear in mind, is it's the point where, of course, you have to keep the funding up. Of course, you have to keep the policy up. Of course, you have to keep the pressure up. But you now have to really partner those at the point of need to get solutions right down to in, in the way people live their lives every day. And as somebody who runs a, a creative consultancy, that's kind of where I get interested. Because all of a sudden, creativity is the answer, not just science and policy and charity. And I have two reasons for being particularly interested in, in this story. The first is, as I said, I'm an Igbo man. I grew up in a rural Nigerian village. I am the very handsome boy to the left of the teacher. <laughs> Always been a teacher's pet. Um, and um, th in this audience, this, number, this percentage might be high. But how many people here have had malaria? You see how few that is? That's actually the largest I've ever had. And when I talk to people about malaria, maybe one hand goes up, often none go up. Malaria makes the flu feel like a paper cut. I had malaria maybe twice a year when I was a child. Um, I come from an educated middle class family, so I always got the meds and the fluids I needed. I was never at danger of death, but it often felt that way. And living in a village, I have so many memories of little wooden boxes being lowered into freshly dug earth, carrying the bodies of people I was playing football with a week ago. So I have a personal reason for being involved, being interested in how do we solve this malaria problem. But also professionally, being, um, being the leader of a creative consultancy, I've been privileged to be involved in two, really, two things that kind of, none of them is perfect, but kind of hinted to me that there can be a creative solution to this. The first was work with this man. This is Olaf Eliasson. You might know him for the weather project at the Tate. And he came up with this idea called Little Sun and said to us, how do we use this to address the, the to help the 1.6 billion people in the world who don't have access to safe, reliable electricity so that they can have a little bit of light in their life to study, to share, to work? And how do we make that something that becomes not a, a pitying piece of charity, but actually a work of art that actually has as much desire and as interesting to somebody in the Western world as it is to somebody at the point of need. And really put it, the power literally into their hands so they can be a source of business. And it's interesting that while 200,000 of these have gone out to Africa in an economic way, it is also the fastest selling item um, in the, it was also the fastest selling item in the Tate Modern Museum. So it's an object of desire. We're not solving these problems with solutions that we don't think are good enough for us, because why would it be good enough for them? And then another project which we were involved in with Bono and a guy called Bobby Shriver is Red, which was how do we partner some of the world's most iconic brands to raise money for AIDS in Africa. And this notion that we can use creativity to bring together diverse coalitions to solve problems became very interesting to me and something that I thought we could bring to malaria. And the fundamental thing that these two things have taught me is that optimism, participation, and creativity are much more powerful tools to solve the problems we face than pity 
and patronization. So we've started something eight weeks ago. And this is very early stages, and you'll see where we're going with it next. And we call it CODEM. And quite simply, CODEM is an idea that pits creativity against malaria, because that's the problem we face right now. We're talking about three constituents of the coalition that we're trying to build. The first is experts who can help us really understand the problem and validate potential solutions, really important. The second is creative people, and I will redefine creative people by the end of my talk, but for now, creative people who are asking to come up with ideas that solve this problem. And then finally, retailers, which is a broad term to talk about those who can get distribution and get solutions out to the point of need. But we need some rules for this creative endeavor, and we have four. The first one is that we're not going to create anything that we wouldn't want for ourselves. So these aren't some patronizing African solutions. We want things that are interesting to all of us. The second, therefore, is that they have to have play and desirability, things that I want to have, not things that I have to have. These are not more pills. The third is that they have to work within the malaria economy. So these have to be affordable at the point of need. And then finally, because 86% of the people who face this, who die from malaria every year, are children under five, we're going to make things that children can engage with. And the back thought we have in there is, if we can get a generation of five-year-olds understanding malaria and engaging with that, we will eliminate this disease in our lifetime. So we had to do a test. This is where five weeks in, we're, we're thinking to ourselves, OK, this makes sense to us. I've had malaria. I'm really passionate about it. James is really passionate about it. Is this something creative people can engage with? So three weeks ago, we invited people from the Science Museum, people from the Royal College of Art, uh, a group that run a ch an innovation charity in Kenya. And we gave them a day with this problem and said, create a product for a child to protect them from being bitten from mosquitoes by mosquitoes at night. And we gave them as, as much information as possible and a space to do this. So the film I'm about to play is a capture of that day. Even the soundtrack in this film was made that same day. We had a soundtrack come out of that. This is um, uh, Sagarika who did the lyrics, but the lyrics weren't appropriate for five-year-olds, so we had to take it out. It had lots of <laughs> words like crack and smack in it. Um, and Carl Sadler, who's a Brixton-based uh, sound designer, um, came up with that soundtrack. There were lots of really practical ideas. How do we make it more fun and playful for kids to engage with malaria? Out of that came a set of toys. Um, from, from that end, there's the doctor, which is actually where you can have your pills. There's Mr. Neto, who, engage, who sticks to your net and makes it something fun. There's your own personal spray can. There is um, Mr. Squeeze, who kind of goes in and mops up um, places around your house where fluids gather, where mosquitoes can breathe. And of course, because every set of superheroes need a baddie, there is Madame Mystique, who kind of represents actually malaria and the death, of, death by malaria. Lots of real practical ideas around nets to make them more engaging. Nets have been the most successful thing, but they're things that people don't like to use, so how can we make them self-raising? How can we make ones that are fit for specific, just to cover specific exposed parts of the body? How can, we make one, how can we make them more educational so kids can put things on it and tell stories with them? And how can we create ones that, in the hot months when you want to sleep outside or on the roof, kind of go with you wherever you are? So a first test to say, actually, people can engage with this. 
Um, and then what we're trying to do now is turn this into something that more people can engage with and use. <laughs> Our belief is that for this idea to work, lots of people need to take it, appropriate it, and so the system, even the branding system, is one that you can turn into any kind of thing you want it to be, whether that's in sports, in retail, um, in fashion, or for content around gaming, and so on and so forth. So the whole idea is how can you be more generous with this idea so that more people engage and create things on the back of Codem. So that's where we are, a notion, an idea that anybody can adopt and begin to start solving problems with malaria with the right access to the expertise that says here are the real problems we have, but also with access to retailers so that when something is a great product, we can put it out into the world. We are in the process of gathering the experts around this. There are some specific things we need to know. We need to be clear about malaria science. We need to understand how you distribute things and get them to the point of need. We, understand the we need to understand the behaviors people have currently around malaria and design around those. And we need to understand the cultural platforms. Disease and illness is something that is often really deeply embedded in culture. And so how you deal with that has to take those things into consideration. And when we think top down, we often don't really realize those things and deal with them appropriately. The next big milestone, April 25th, is World Malaria Day. Our goal is the ex uh, similar to what you just saw that we did three weeks ago, a bunch of people together in a room, that we have a thousand of these happening around the world. We're building a platform where people can download a kit, and on April the 25th, people can download those kits, and whether it's a, a, a classroom of seven-year-olds in in Aba in Nigeria, or whether it's a, a, a corporate off-site where people can get that and do something about it, we want to see this spread right through the world. And that kind of is maybe the meta point I want to make, that we don't believe these ideas can go further unless we make them, unless we're generous about them and open it up to the many. So we have a bunch of creative partners on board already, but we want more. We have a bunch of retail partners on board already, we're going to get more. We have a bunch of experts on board already, but we're going to aim to get more. And, we, and I want to make an open invitation to everybody to get involved, because I think we are all creative people. This notion that, create, that somebody, people say to me, I'm not creative or I'm really creative, I find, as somebody who runs a creative company, incredibly limiting. Because we're all born with this creative spirit. And I think it is right that in the world today, we celebrate creative individuals, creative objects and products, and creative ideas. But what we really know is that while these things might start by two people having a collision in a pub, for ideas to really change the world, we have to be open and generous about them and get many people, many people, involved in solving the problems that afflict us all. So I invite you to join Code M and find your own way of helping us get rid of this scourge on our lives. Thank you very much. <laughs>